We're in the lab today at Diverse Dimensions. We're going to do some reverse engineering on this Adirondack chair back. This is a nylon part, and my client wants to track the perimeter data on here in a 2D format so that he can put this cutter path into his machine and start making these out of this nylon material. Uh, a little bit better uh, chair back for the weather and for fading from the sun. So, um, so yeah, we can easily do that in 4.0 and in X as well, but we've got an SAT file up. We're going to do a 2D freehand scan of all the geometry on this part. So hang tight, I'm going to fixture this up, and then we'll jump right into the SAT file. So you'll see in my SAT file, I've already done the perimeter scans of all of this detail here, and I've put this, uh, this chair back into an alignment based on a line-line coordinate system. I actually measured two lines, which is this bottom and this side here, and I've done a line-line coordinate system. Uh, and then the caddy part. So what I'd like to show is how I'm going to track these pockets here as a 2D freehand scan as well. So in the SAT file, what I'm going to do is go right up to the measure menu. I'm going to go to scan. And then I'm going to go to this freehand scan here. Now, 2D freehand scan is what I'm actually going to do here. That's the type I've picked. I usually check this chordal here. And I, I set these cylindrical tolerance zone radius here to about 10 thou. And this maximum distance is also set to about 10 thousandths. My minimum distance right here, I usually set that to 10 thousandths as well. And then I get rid of the rest of the things behind it there. So I've got 10 thousandths that are set for all of these options here. And there's a lot of explanation that goes into these details here. So what I always recommend is do some of these scans and try some of these different settings. Maybe set that to 100 thousandths, or maybe set it down to 1 thou, or something like that. Just play around with all of these options just to take a look at how the output looks um, coming into your CAD system, not just necessarily out of, of CAM2 here, but pull these into your CAD system as well and just take a look at them. So I'm going to set all of this criteria to 10 thousandths of an inch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to save as a closed polyline. Now, since they're inside features, I'm going to do a polyline around the perimeter, and it will track the inside of that, of that cutout. So I'm going to say close polylines there and say OK. Now, since it's a 2D feature, of course, it needs a plane to go to. So I'm just going to pick up on the plane 001, which is my tabletop. And then I'll grab my arm here a second. Now, notice what I've got in my bottom left-hand corner. It says, while triggered, scan mode is selected. Now, whenever I do these 2D freehand scans, I 100% of the time use the scan mode, which is the X toggle key. In fact, I'll hit the X key here just to show you the difference. If I punch on the X, my single mode is selected. And that's great for taking planes or circles or some other features. Uh, but when I want to track the perimeter geometry in a 2D freehand scan, I always pick up on the X key, which is the hot key for scanning. Now, I'll come into this little area right here. And I've got my quantum with my 6 mil probe on. I did want to show that what I use is a bigger probe when I'm tracking this geometry. It just seems to flow a little bit easier around the perimeter, uh, the perimeter scans. So I've got my 6 mil on there today. So I'll come in as normal to the surface as I can, just because then I know I'm not going to hit any of the, of the sides of the probe as I'm in this feature here. So I'm going to start right about here, and I'm going to click and hold this green button down and listen to the points that it's taking. I'm slowly working my way around, making sure that I'm on the surface all the time. And then I'll come back around here, and I'll just go a little bit past where I was as I started. And then I'll compensate away. One thing I did want to note, though, is that when we do this geometry, Faro only is tracking points in the center of the probe. It doesn't know the vector that we're doing all this, uh, this scanning at, so it just knows the center of the probe. So we'll notice that in the SAT file as well. First thing it does is it says, OK, do you want to keep the stream? And I say, yes, I would. I think that stream was pretty good. Now, look what it's just created. I'll zoom in on that a little bit. That's the detail I just, uh, I just scanned. 
But now I want to show you guys that since I've used a 6 millimeter probe and I've scanned uh, all of that detail right there, and Faro only knows where the center of that probe is, I'll show you that here with the inspect XYZ, which just shows the probe detail. Let me zoom in right down to this bottom here. Now I'll grab the arm again and just show how that looks. Look when I come into that little area there. Notice that my probe, as I swipe around here, kind of looks like it's right in the middle of that probe. Uh, the line actually is. It doesn't look like it's on the equator at all. It's uh, just the center. So that's good to know. When you I just this file out and give it to your client or to your design guys, let them know, hey, I used a 6-millimeter probe as I was tracking this geometry. Therefore, they'll take this shape and they will have to offset it three millimeters, or the radius of the probe, to the outboard side to make this the correct size. So just don't forget that. That's very important. You don't want to create a cutter path based on your scan here. You actually want to blow this out by the three millimeters, or the radius of the probe. So a very easy way to track geometry if you just have to do a 2D scan, a freehand scan works great for that.